Good afternoon and welcome to the Walters Art Museum Conservation Window. I am Katarina Ziegler, the Interim Director of Development. Now before we get started with our program, I'd like to read our Indigenous Land and Cultural Acknowledgement. The Walters Art Museum acknowledges the Piscataway and Susquehannock nations that originally inhabited the land on which this museum is located. We also acknowledge the nations, most notably the Lumbee, that migrated here and the indigenous peoples whose ancestors are represented in the objects we steward in our collection. Now we're streaming live from the conservation window on the fourth floor of the museum on the day that we are open. So you might hear some of our visitors as they are exploring. Today is our second annual day of giving and ask a conservator day. And I am so thrilled to share some great news that I just received by text. We have received a brand new commitment, a brand new donation from the John W. High C. Fund for Historic Preservation towards our exciting project to conserve the St. Gabriel painting by Signorelli, by Luca Signorelli. Today on the Day of Giving, which is our second annual day of giving, we have a goal to raise $18,000 towards the treatment of this historic masterpiece from our Renaissance collection. And to meet that goal, we have launched a campaign on our website. And with this $5,000 grant, plus the gifts that we have received already, thanks to many of you, we are already at $7,400 towards our $18,000 goal. So thank you, and I'm so delighted. And you are able to make a gift today using the links on our page or by visiting thewalters.org. So why November 3rd? Well, November 3rd in 1934 is when the museum first opened to the public. And we opened with a conservation and technical department. And that department is responsible for essential work for caring for our art collections. Now, I know you all want to have the opportunity to ask a conservator, and I'm going to turn that over shortly. I'd like to introduce you to Pamela Betts, senior, uh, senior paintings conservator at the Walters. Pam started working in the conservation department at the Walters Art Museum in January of 2012, and she is the senior co conservator of paintings. She is a graduate of the Winterthur University of Delaware program in art conservation with a master of science degree. 
after completing an undergraduate degree at Moravian College, which is now a university. She undertook technical studies and conservation treatments of European and American paintings, as well as those from Southeast and Central Asia. And before coming to the Walters, she completed extensive work at the Indianapolis Museum of Art, the Harvard's Fogg Art Museum, Williamstown Art Conservation, National Gallery of Art, and Shelbourne Museum. So we know that this amazing work that is more than 500 years old is in wonderful hands. Now, Pam, I wanna turn this over to you and could you please say a little bit about this amazing work and please feel free to type in questions for Pam that you'd like to hear about this painting or about conservation more generally. Hi, everybody. I'm so excited to be live streaming here from our conservation window. Um, thank you so much for joining in and for all the amazing contributions so far. We're really so grateful. Thank you. Uh, what I have here today in the window with me is a painting currently undergoing conservation treatment. And it might be a little surprising to see it in the condition it's in. Um, it's a painting, as, as Kat, Katrina said, is over 500 years old, um, made about 1490. Um, and what you're seeing right now is the painting in the process of, of conservation, as I said, and the later uh, restoration layers of varnish and repainting have been removed or reduced from the surface. We're not completely done yet. And in fact, we were finding, we were finding it, that it was a pretty damaged painting, but they've known that here at the Walters. We're, we're actually the third oldest conservation department in the United States. And we have files that go back from the 1930s, 1934 even. And there's an old file in, in from, I believe, 1937 that says, this is in need of conservation, but there's so much damage that we don't have time to do it now. So almost 100 years later, we're, we're finally um, saying it's time, it's time. The materials had aged and yellowed and discolored and his Luca Signorelli's true colors were just obscured completely. So it was time to start the conservation treatment. Um, when we welcome any questions you might have. Um, and so please, please don't hesitate to, to chime in anytime. All right, thank you, Pam. We had a couple of questions come in of a Google form that we sent out via email okay. from some folks. So I'll throw a couple of questions at you and please leave any comments that you have or questions in our chat. You'll also see pinned to the top of the comments our donation page for Day of Giving so you can help us reach our $18,000 goal. So Pam, could you start by telling us how do you approach conserving this painting and where you started working? Sure. I'd like to think about it that I just, when I have a new object to consider for treatment, I, I just spend a lot of time looking at first and asking questions. It's almost like a doctor would if you go to a, an examination. I say, what, what is wrong here? What's not working right? Um, are, there layer, are there any uh, instability to the paint layers or the support? That's probably the first primary concern is, is some, are we about to lose material? And so we write, we work closely with the curatorial department and we um, come together in agreement of a proposed treatment and um, is, which may include stabilization of layers or reduction um, of, of later restoration layers so that the original um, intent of the artist can better be understood and seen. I spend a good deal of time looking um, in various uh, different wavelengths of light. I um, sometimes X-radiography X or infrared reflectography, um, ultraviolet light, just to get a better sense of the materials and methods used by, by the, the artist, in this case, Luca Signorelli. Um, so that's how I start. Uh, and, and, and then, um, so to, to get to the, the um, spot we are now, um, I did some testing too with the varnish layers to see what was safe to remove the varnish, but to, to leave the, the original paint intact. Um, so that's where we are now. There's still work to do, as you can see. Wonderful. Do you have any idea what could have caused the initial damage? Yeah, don't we wish that they would talk to us and tell, <laughs> tell us what happened to you? But what I suspect is that um, as masterful as the painting is, 
that maybe in the subsequent centuries, since it was made first in 1490, maybe in the 17th or 18th century, who knows, it was, it was relegated to a more distant room in the church or in the collection it was in to make way for newer works. And maybe it was a little bit forgotten, I'm not sure, but it looks like perhaps besides general wear and tear with these localized losses, um, there's obviously something that may have run down the surface, perhaps water, it may have been exposed to water. Um, and, and I should state too that it is um, Archangel Gabriel and it's a scene of the Annunciation. We know that because of these white lilies he holds, that's it's a symbol of purity and virginity. And we know that other Annunciation scenes, including by this artist, I have a picture of it here on my table, um, but I, that there would have been Virgin Mary here. He's enunciating her, uh, the coming of Christ to her. And this, so the painting has, is now a fragment, unfortunately. There, um, there, there has been something that was cut away. And we believe we know where that fragment is, but it's in a private collection. Um, so it, we do not own it. <laughs> it's interesting that you're showing the damage on the painting and the possible causes, but could you also walk us through what materials you're currently using or have used so far to conserve and restore this painting? Sure. Um, it, it probably seems to people that you have to go backwards before you can go forwards. I have to remove the materials that later um, restorers put on it that didn't age very well. And to do that, like I was explaining after I examine it and come up with a proposal with a curator, I start doing um, tests. So I come up with a solvent solution that effectively reduces the varnish. I did check for the paint insecurities, like I was saying first, and I think I, I did um, have to um, put a little adhesive in some loose areas, but that's common. Um, and even as I undergo, I might have to readdress some of these. So, so far solvent mixtures, maybe gelling, gelling materials to thicken the varnish, or the, sorry, the, the solu solvent solution to keep it right where I want it. And then um, as I proceed, I will be applying a, a conservation grade reversible varnish that should not age. And, um, and also in painting these losses uh, with conservation grade uh, paints that are made with a, a special resin that we know ages well. That's a whole big part of our field is the conservation science. There are, um, we're very fortunate to have people who are developing and testing polymers for us to use that we know will age well. And we'll, when, when they need to come off someday, they may, right? That we know that they'll be easy for somebody to take off and not be a problem. I think that's a perfect segue for any of our folks watching now who may not even know what art conservation is. Sure. If you could talk a little bit about what you do, the work that you do for the museum and how it's important to the collection today. Sure. Conservation broadly is the preservation and care of our shared collective uh, cultural heritage. I mean, humans have been, had the urge to express themselves and create since, since the, the beginning. Um, and it's, it's our job to care for and be stewards and advocates for, for these collective works. And they could be from centuries ago or they could be current materials too. Um, and we do that by ensuring that the objects have um, a safe environment and that can be tailored for every different type of object. Um, videotape may require something different than metal. Um, so everything needs a different type of storage environment and display environment. You might see things behind glass or um, things protected in different ways. And, that's because uh, every the environment, uh, the relative humidity and the temperature can uh, need to be held as, as stable as possible. If these start to really spike and get it out of control, our, our on a material level, we have organic and inorganic materials and they can react um, badly to really drastic changes in the environment. So preventive conservation is a big thing and um, and yeah, like I said, and it doesn't have to be work in a, a museum. We like to do outreach to help um, people who may collect their kids' drawings or their grandmother's quilts or their family's photographs just to um, help them know how to store them better. And, um, and you know, and those are the kind of questions we can, we can try to field for you too. Uh, 
if you have any questions. Yes, of course. If you have any questions, please feel free to drop them in our comments. And once again, the link to our giving page is pinned at the top as well. So if you want to help us reach our goal to help the conservation of the Archangel Angel Gabriel, please click that link and give today. Um, could you talk about what's been your favorite and possibly least favorite part of conserving this painting so far, Pam? Sure. I think the, my favorite part for sure is seeing Signorelli's true colors coming back um, after being obscured by heavy and disfiguring layers that were applied on, on top of it. I mean, in the past, sometimes um, restorers might paint a little bit past the the boundary of the loss, because it was kind of easier to do that. So they're hiding a lot of his original paint too, not only the dirty varnish. So that's certainly my favorite part um, to let the art shine again. And my least favorite part, I guess, is just having to expose all the past unfortunate damage. I mean, nobody likes to see that, of course. <laughs> How does the restoration process of this painting so far compare to other projects that you may have done, either here at the Walters in, or in your career in the past? I would say it's um, pretty on par with other, um, especially the, the Western paintings in our collection that have maybe suffered from poor environmental um, environments in the past, maybe like this one, uh, and then subsequent campaigns of people over centuries going in and and fixing. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm sure that they did a lot of good things too. They, they probably saved paint layers and, and put adhesive in and everything. But when they got a little heavy handed with the with the repainting, um, yeah, uh, that's that's what we're trying to steer away from now. Uh, so, but anyway, it, it's it's pretty much on par with other things that, especially of this time period that I've seen in the past. Wonderful. We have another submitted question sent in to us by one of our visitors. Um, could you explain the difference between conservation and restoration? Sure. Those, um, those are interchangeable and sometimes confusing. Other countries call restoration what we call conservation. So, I think it's important not to make too big of a deal of it, but um, in general, conservation um, requires um, pretty stringent training and um, in graduate programs. And importantly, we um, we adhere to a code of ethics um, that require high standards of care and um, you know adherence to the principality of, of reversibility whenever possible. Um, whatever I put on should be easily reversible. I concede that what I take off doesn't go back on, um, but what I take off, it will be uh, not original materials. Um, and restoration, honestly, when I do conservation, there is sometimes restoration involved. Restoration focuses more probably on the aesthetics of something and they, it may not um, it may not hold as dear keeping all the original components to something. They may say, well, on this on this old bicycle, maybe we'll put a new tire on or something. Where conservation would keep the old tire and um, and and interpret it and and understand that it you know treasure the original materials that were used. That's just an example of the bicycle that everybody can relate to, but. Um, if you have any further questions, I'll, I'll try to clarify that more. We do have a question in our chat. Thanks for the important work that you do, Pam. What's something that viewers would be surprised to learn about the work of a conservator? Hmm. Um, well, maybe how much science that we have to study. We do have to take, um, we have to learn a lot of chemistry, especially. Um, you may be, and, and we do have to keep um, on top of current current discoveries and, and new analytical methods um, but that all that all is very fun to me so I it's not it's not hard to want to keep on top of things um, there's always new um, ways to to hyperspectral imaging for one thing using algorithms um, luckily the computers do that for me um, <laughs> Um, this this type of thing. I don't know. Also, that we we um, when we can, we try to travel and go see other examples of an of an artist's work if that's at all possible and in a budgetary 
uh, way and uh, feasibility. But um, so there's some research. There's a, there's a lot of research involved, and sometimes that that um, invites the opportunity for travel. So that's wonderful. I'm sure I'll think of other things as we go on, but that's what comes to mind right away. Well, travel is a great segue because you did travel to Italy to see more of Signorelli's work. Could you tell us a little bit more about that and how it's influenced your conservation? Sure. Um, yeah, I was very, very fortunate. I, I did have a work trip anyway, so I was going towards Europe for another um, another job, but um, it was actually to oversee the uh, return of a loan. Um, but I was able to tag on some uh, days to go to see this artist, Luca Signorelli's birth town, Cortona, which is one of the hill towns in, in southern Tuscany. And they had a, a large exhibition of his work on the 500th anniversary of his death. And so, and um, the, the one painting that I really, really wanted to see, hopefully you can see this, um, um, is this this other version of an Annunciation that he did. And it's, it really closely relates to our painting, as you can see. Um, and when it comes time for me, to, I'm not quite done with the cleaning yet, but when it comes time for me to uh, reintegrate the losses, I'll have excellent, um, I'll have an excellent model to go by as he probably did something very similar and may have used um, a cartoon, an initial drawing um, before he did both of these works. He, he did other versions of the Annunciation too, but this one is just particularly um, great reference for me. We have another comment in our chat from Petal125, who says that they recently got into learning about art, art conservation and it's been surprisingly interesting. So we talked about the work that you've been doing, but could you tell us how one becomes an art conservator? Sure. Well, you need a, a background in, um, in, in science, especially chemistry. You need art history and you need to have some studio art um, experience too. Um, you, um, as you can see, if you have to repaint some of these losses, you need to have good color mixing. You need a real high attention to detail. You have to like um, to really zone everything else and really focus on things. Um, you really have to have um, an open mind and um, kind of empathy towards other cultures and time periods. Uh, you have to have a willingness to keep learning on the job because the field changes a lot. There's always new developments. Um, I'm probably forgetting things, but and one other thing too, if you if you are on a track to get into conservation, trying to get pre-program experience, and that means pre-conservation school experience. If you can, if you can start working with a private conservator or in, or in a museum and just get a feel for what is done, um, uh, start to experience handling objects safely, uh, learning about all the materials that, that older artworks and newer artworks are made of. Um, it'll give you a little taste of what it all involves and see if, see if all the really minute, oh, sometimes tedious, honestly, work is, is suited to you. <laughs> Perfect. Well, we're getting close to the end of our program today, so I just wanna remind everyone that the pin comment has a link to donate and help us reach our goal of $18,000 for our Thank Day of you, Giving. <laughs> so Pam, could you just close us off on why Day of Giving is important to the work that you do? Sure. Day of Giving is um, another opportunity for the conservation department to outreach to the public. I mean, we use the, our conservation window as an outreach tool too, and this is open Fridays and Saturdays, 12.30 to four, and it rotates, so today, I'm in here with a painting, but tomorrow somebody might be in here with a, an ancient manuscript or, you know, a, a sword or, you know, an object, um, a ceramic vessel. You'll see different things all the time, so it's good. But this today, the Day of Giving, is just another opportunity for us to just spread the awareness of conservation and the importance of saving our cultural heritage, no matter really what it is. Um, and, and preparing even for emergency situations is um, what we do too. So day giving is just really to, um, to, to expose the, the conservation, the work that we do and to uh, invite people to learn more and uh, ask questions. 
Thanks, Pam. That was fascinating. And thank you all for participating in Ask a Conservator. And thank you to everyone who has already made a gift on this day of giving. But if you haven't yet, now it's your turn to help restore and conserve this wonderful, important work of art in the Walters Collection. And we've made it super easy. There's a link pinned to the comments, and, or you can visit our website, thewalters.org, or follow our social media pages. We've done a little bit of math too, and for $28, you can help conserve one square inch of that work of art. Um, feel free to give more. And I'd like to thank once again to those of you who have given earlier and to our wonderful new supporter, the John W. High C Fund for Historic Preservation, who just awarded a wonderful gift to us during this live program. So thank you, everyone. Thank you, Pam. And please make a gift today to help us reach our goal. Thank you, everybody.